Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and having a lovely start to your new year. This is my first video of 2024 and I feel like this is going to be a good year. 24 used to be my favourite number, so I feel like this is going to be a very good year because it just is. I've got so many things planned, I've got lots of patterns I want to release this year, a dress pattern that is almost ready for its testing phase so if you're following me on Instagram and you'd be interested in testing out a pattern then at some point I will be sharing on there when I'm going to be doing the testing phase of that. I also made this little waistcoat last month and I, I have a pattern for it. I haven't graded it up yet. It's just like your classic gilet and it's got these little buttons and loops at the front, got pockets in the side, yeah it's obviously quilted and then the inside is like that so lots of binding edges and things. I really love how it's turned out so let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing a pattern of that or not. So I wanted to just sit down with you, do a little update of everything and show you all of my projects that I have on the go. I have one very exciting quilt project on the go. I finally decided to bite the bullet and do a hexagon quilt. And it's been taking quite a while. I mean, I've started it in September and I'll show you how far I've got so far. But my God, it is time consuming. But I know that when it's done, I'm gonna be like, wow, I did that. And that took me too long. <laughs> so I've been keeping all of my sewing supplies for this quilt in one of my quilted wash bags. This is just the quilted toiletry bag. This is the smaller size, not the tall one. I'm always being asked when these are being restocked and I haven't got any on the go at the moment, um, but I did just restock my tote bags. So actually before I show you the quilt, I'll show you the bags that I've just restocked on the website. So if you missed out last time with the quilted tote bags, I've now got um, these two shades available. I've got Buttercup, and pink linen. So I've been using this pink linen one for ages now since I made them the first time and they are just such a handy size. They've got two lengths of strap, a big drawstring, a drawstring that holds everything inside and they're fully lined with a pocket inside as well. So if you're interested in those I will leave the link to them, they're just on my website. Um, and yeah, limited stock as always because um, I only make small batches of these things um, but if you're interested that's where they are. So moving on to the quilt, I wanted this quilt to be full of like really special fabrics to me um, so ones that I've, I've used in the past and only have a tiny bit left of or ones that I've been saving up and haven't been brave enough to use. So I've gone for a colour scheme of like browns and blues. I just think blue quilts look pretty timeless whichever room they're in. Um, so I shall show you how far I've got so far. So these are the shades and prints I've got going and yeah it is extremely extremely time consuming. Um, like one of these flowers would probably take about an hour to stitch together. I mean I have got a lot quicker now at doing it but it's winter now and my fingers get so dry and cold and my thumb has like split in half the skin at the top so it's really painful so it makes sewing very painful even if I've got like a thimble on or something but eventually I will have I think four rows one two three four um, and then I'll go around the edge with something else I think so that's the quilt I'm working on at the moment and I would highly recommend it as a January crafting project. This is the back, looks crazy right now because it's still got all the paper in it. I'll probably do a whole video on this quilt once I've finished it, like showing you how I piece them all together and how best tips and tricks for paper piecing because I mean I'm learning as I go as well. Um, I've only done one paper piecing project before. So yeah, I'm very excited for this to be done one day, but it's just one of those ones that's going to test my patience. And I've got to just sit it out 
do little bits every now and then and slowly watch it grow. Then yesterday I had a play around with some jersey fabric and I'd actually never worked with jersey before because it's always been a bit daunting to me to work with stretchy fabric. I like fabric that I can control. <laughs> but I have this high neck jersey top that I love and I wear it so much and I was like, oh, I kind of want more that shape. So I used the top to create a pattern and had a go and just went for it. Didn't twirl it or anything because I don't have any jersey fabric to twirl with. <laughs> and it's turned out pretty well. So it's got a high neck and long sleeves. I made the sleeves even longer than the original pattern because I want to have like really nice long sleeves. I think you should have as long a sleeves as you can. And the fabric is so soft. It's an organic cotton jersey. And I picked this up in Copenhagen. It just looks like that. And I'm actually going back to Copenhagen at the end of the month. So I really wanted to try out making a jersey top to see if I liked it because there were so many good jerseys out there in the fabric shops. So I'm definitely gonna be picking some of those up and bringing them home and making myself little tops. I'll insert a little picture of what it looks like on me. It was just so easy to make. So I'm gonna look through my other jersey tops and see if there's one that I wanna learn how to make. I'm also gonna try and make a neck, one that has like a neck band attached to it because I think that would be good because at the moment I'm just doing the like whole raw edge look which I really like but I think I shall give it a go with doing a proper neckline that's a bit lower. So yeah another little sewing project I've been going at and then the last few things I have to show you are fabric that I've been picking up recently. Um, I have found some really great fabrics and I am very excited for all of the projects that I'm doing this year. I hope you guys are excited too. So this is the first one. It's not coming up hugely well on the camera, I must say, but it's a duvet cover from Zara Home. I got this in the sale and it's just a very subtle check. It's kind of a bit lilac-y but also beige. I just thought this would be a really useful fabric to have in my stash for making bags especially drawstring bags, I think they look really cute in this. I'm gonna come a bit closer so you can actually see them. This one I picked up on Etsy, but it looked like it had a really interesting texture to it in the cotton. Um, it's just black and white polka dot. So I'm either gonna make a dress out of this or I will make some toiletry bags to sell. I then made a big order at the cloth house. I used to go to the cloth house all the time when I was at uni and their fabrics are just so gorgeous. Lots of Indian block print fabrics and just really nice very wearable looking prints and weights of fabric. So these three I picked up with a quilt in mind. I'm thinking of doing like a really simple quilt with these. First one is just this really lovely blue rustic gingham and then and then I've also got like a ready gingham and then this block printed little diamond polka dot. I also picked some of that print up in the black colorway. And then finally, I got a good amount of this gorgeous polka dot fabric. I love the base color of this. I think it's such a nice beige and I love how the polka dots are kind of a bit of, a little bit random because they've been block printed on. Um, so some of them aren't perfect and I just think that adds a really nice touch to it and it's got such a good weight. So I'm going to be making my next dress in this fabric, um, the one that I'm making a pattern for. So this is the dress I'm currently working on the pattern for. It's a nice long midi length dress with all of this gathering detailing and that's the front and then this is the back. And so I thought the polka dot fabric would look really great in this style. And also when I come to film the tutorial, this will be a good fabric to use because you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So there we go, there's all of the little random bits I wanted to share with you. I keep just accumulating all of these different projects and I've decided that January is definitely my hibernation month. Like, I just want to hibernate. I don't want to see anyone, I don't want to do anything. I just want to be in my studio making things 
and having a good time. And I have been having a good time with my crafts. <laughs> I am going to put these fabrics away and do a little bit of my hexagon quilt. So I'll show you how I'm sort of attaching them all together and I'm going to put Gilmore Girls on in the background because usually I don't watch it. Uh, I only watch it like in autumn but I've, you know, it's been a tough January and I need Gilmore Girls. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put my Invisalign back in. I thought I could talk properly with Invisalign in and I seem to be able to do it in real life and then as soon as I turn the camera on it just goes to put I can't talk with my Invisalign in on camera <laughs> so I'm going to sew up this little hexagon here and then that will join that to there and then I need another hexagon here before I add the next bit so I tend to be adding like one flower and I attach three hexagons to the side and then I sort of attach it one at a time all the way down and then adding the little gaps, filling in the gaps as I go. So that seems to be working. I'm sure there's so many different methods of attaching these all together and it's, it's only going to get more difficult the larger it gets. I have been finding these little plastic pin clips quite useful for sort of holding bits in place while I sew around them because you have to sort of angle it and fold it at different angles to attach to the next bit. So it's just a lot of manipulating and so I find that these little clips are quite good because then they hold it while I start the initial sewing and then I'll just take it off once I've got to the end of that little bit. The thread I've been using is from Empress Mills, it's there cotton quilting thread. I think it's not not like their super thick quilting thread, it's just their normal cotton thread really and it's been working very nicely. I don't think I'm going to be able to do much of this today because my thumb is still feeling very painful. It just always splits in the cold weather, it's so annoying. And this has been a really nice little relaxing evening thing to do like I'll put something on the TV and just sit and sew and sometimes if or if I'm like going away somewhere and I know I'm going to be waiting around for ages I will sew a little flower just one of these and I'm going to Copenhagen again at the end of the month like I said and last time I went I took a load of these to sew like a load of the flowers so I'm going to do that again hopefully get a lot done while I'm on the plane or out there. Saying that, it's only a two hour flight so <laughs> I'll probably only get two flowers sewn together. But anyway, I'm going to sit here and do some quilting.